Knowing what to do next once a customer decides that they want to work with you is a massively overlooked part of the whole web design journey. And if you can get this wrong, it can have severe consequences like it did for me. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tristan. I've gone from struggling freelancer to having a successful six-figure web design business in around 12 months with only a few small changes along the way. Now this video is part four in a series where I'm giving you the information that you need to make sure that you get your web design business right. And today I'm gonna to be showing you how you can create an effortless onboarding system so you don't end up with unhappy clients like I once did that are requesting refunds or in some circumstances maybe not paying you at all. So if you're looking for a system to bring clients on board that's going to save you stress, it's going to save you time and more importantly it's going to save you money in the long run then stick around. Okay so here we have an example of what I consider the typical web design journey. Now we've already taken care of the first two steps here. We've taken care of outreach and how to attract your ideal customer and we've taken care of the sales process in that you now know how you can attract and convert your customer to agree to work with you. So now we're talking about the next step and this is what we call onboarding and I like to think that onboarding is the bridge between the acquisition side and the fulfillment side. The fulfillment being the design, the development and the launch of the website or project that you are producing. Now our focus is going to be on the onboarding. Now if you haven't heard of onboarding before Chances are you're already doing it, maybe you don't know. But the onboarding is the steps and the system and the process that allows you to take a customer from being just a prospect to actually becoming a customer within your business and you collecting all the information that you need in order to fulfill the project. You will have a process, whether it's sending a couple of emails or doing this on a kickoff call, you will have some form of onboarding process already. So I like to say that onboarding is the process of adjusting new web design customers to your business. Your business is unique and that's why sometimes your onboarding process is going to be unique too. I am simply sharing with you today my onboarding process so you can either copy it or you can just take inspiration from it and, Im and improve your own systems. So during this stage, you'll typically inform them about your services. You will inform them on what to expect. You can also get them up to speed on your design process if you wish and address any concerns that they have at that point. All right, there's a lot going on here and a lot of things are often overlooked with this process. And if you can nail these things, you're gonna get off on the right foot with your brand new customer. At this stage, you create what I like to call a lasting impression. Okay, remember, you haven't worked with this customer before and they haven't worked with you before. So first impressions do count and you wanna make it a good one. You can cultivate a long lasting relationship and make your client continue to, to, to believe and feel confident with your business by having a good onboarding process. And, and this is why I say that you, chances are you've got an onboarding process already. This is the step where you get paid. And if you're worried about how do you get paid when you sign up a customer, this is gonna answer that question for you. There are a few reasons why I consider onboarding important, important enough for me to create an entire video on it. It benefits you and it benefits your customer. So let's have a look at how. Well, first of all, you get commitment from your client. This is at the very least, what you'll already be doing within your business. You'll be getting some sort of commitment, whether it is getting an agreement signed or whether you are getting an invoice paid for the deposit maybe. If you're not, then you absolutely should be because you need to have the customer invested in some way or another. Usually having them sign an agreement and having them pay a first invoice for a deposit is a great way to have them invested in the project so they're not just gonna disappear. The last thing you want is for you to do all of your hard work for you then to have to chase them for payment, for them to just disappear, all because you had no agreement and they had no skin in the game. That's why that first invoice is super, super important. So at the very least, you'll have this step nailed, or you should. If you take anything away from today, it's this first, first part of getting paid and getting a commitment from your client. Okay, so you get the commitment from the client. Next, it teaches them the process. It teaches them your process. And this is great for setting expectations. Remember, this business hasn't worked with you before. Maybe they've not worked with any freelancer or agency before in, in their time. And so they don't know what to expect. Okay, and you can use the onboarding process to just let them know you know, what's next? Okay, what, what are the key dates? What are the key deliverables? When are they expected to see them? What do they need to do? Okay, answering all of those, okay, answering all of those questions, is gonna put them at ease and just sets a level of expectation, which is good for them, but also it's, it's actually good for you. There's nothing worse than having a customer that's emailing you every single day because they wanna know what's going on. 
onboarding, teaching them the process prevents things like that from happening. And next, as I've just alluded to, it sets expectations. This sets expectations on both parts, okay? What do they expect from you and what do you expect from your client? Okay, if they are providing assets or providing images, video, content, text, when do you need that by? And if you don't receive it by that date, what does that mean? What does that mean for the project? Okay, set those expectations. And also we've got, it allows you to gather important information, okay? Now you would have spoken to this client, I'm sure, and you would have made notes. And if you follow in my process, you would have absolutely done that. But sometimes notes can get lost, conversations can maybe get forgotten if you haven't recorded them. So what we do is we gather or regather a lot of the information that we've spoken about, about the business, what their goals are, some of their key information about competitors, things that they like, things that they don't like. And we can, we can use all that information to make sure that we're getting the project right. So we use the onboarding process to gather information. And then finally, it's great for addressing any concerns. Now, typically with a good onboarding process like this, they tend to not have any concerns because you've set expectations, you've outlined the key deliverable dates, and they know what they're expecting. But if you do have any common problems, you can create almost like an FAQ section just to make sure that they are in the loop with everything that's going on. Just as just as a whole, an, a good onboarding process will address any of the common concerns that your customer might have. Cool, so the bit that you're here for, okay, what is, what is my process? Okay, I've broken my process down into five steps and you're gonna be able to implement this into your business. And once you've nailed this, okay, it should only take you 15 minutes to do what you need to do. And it should only take like 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes max for your customer to complete this onboarding process. Okay, it's saving you time, it's saving them time. And it's it's really, it's gonna save you a lot of headaches if you can get this process right. So in this journey, we're taking our customer from being a prospect all the way to a onboarded client of yours where you, their information is on their systems, you've got an agreement signed, you've got payment, etc., etc. Okay, so how, how do we do that? Okay, what does it look like as a six-figure agency owner that's spent time refining this process and improving it over the past four years? What does this process look like for us? And I'm gonna talk you through now. Okay, so step one, I've already mentioned this, is the most important step. This is why it's step number one, and that is you getting paid or invoicing. So there, there are many ways that you can collect payment, but the way that we do this, we rely on Stripe. The reason why we rely on Stripe is it's secure, it's efficient, it keeps all of our transactions in one place, and more importantly, it actually keeps our customer's card on file if there's any problems down the line where they're refusing to pay us. We have it in our agreement, which we'll get onto shortly, where once a project is accepted, once it is finalized, once it is live, you know, we take that final payment automatically. So that's why we use Stripe. We've, there's, there's been so many problems in the past where a client has just vanished off the earth and you may have had this problem too. And this, this Stripe's amazing for preventing that from happening. Next, you wanna get an agreement by way of a service agreement or getting that contract signed. And the way that we do this, we use a tool called Hello Bonsai. Now there's other low cost tools available like Dropbox Sign, for example, but we use Hello Bonsai because we found it to be the best for us. They have a ton of templates in there which we can just select depending on our project type. We can create our own templates and just recycle them with a few small adjustments for each of our customers. It's really easy to use. The client will receive an email from Hello Bonsai where they can view the agreement, they can read it, and then they can digitally sign it at the bottom. So it's a really easy process. Like gone are the days where you have to manually send a PDF. They have to try and find a way to, to sign it and then send it you back. Like it's all handled for us within Hello Bonsai. And it's awesome. So that's the first two steps. They're the most important steps. Invoicing getting paid and contract or agreement. Okay, those two things absolutely need to happen. With If you take anything away from today, it's making sure that those two steps exist within your business. So if any of you are wondering how much we're actually charging within our first invoice, it's 50% of the project. Now there are some ways or some circumstances where we might split this up into like 30, 30, 40. Is that right? Yep. Yeah. Um, or like 25, 25, 25, 25. Uh, it's totally up to you between you and your customer, but for the most part, it's 50% up front, 50% on completion, and that works best for us and our clients are happy with that. The next step, step three, is all about the questionnaire. This is how we are gathering or, or regathering a lot of the information that's been spoken about between you and your client during a discovery call and a demo call. 
but we now have this in one central place. So this doesn't, it doesn't matter if you haven't taken really in-depth notes, it's now down to your client to kind of put down on paper what it is that they want, supply all of their brand assets that takes place during this questionnaire. They can upload their copy, they can up upload their logo, they can upload their branding document. They can let you know what colors they need to use if you haven't got a branding document. They can tell you what their competitors are. They can tell you what sort of keywords that they wanna be ranking for in search, what keywords they think people use in order to find them. You know, All of this information is super important to allow you to do a much better job when building a website. We do this within a Google questionnaire. Google's great. It allows us to save all of the answers in one central location so we can just pop onto Google. We can go to Google Forms and then we can just see at any point any of our clients' information that they've submitted to us and we can export this and we can share it with our designers, we can share it with our developers. Okay, it's really easy for us. Alternatively, if you don't wanna use Google Forms, you can absolutely create a form within your own website with a selection of fields that gathers the information that you need and saves it and stores it in your website database. Okay, it's the same thing. We just happen to be using Google, but you could, if you wanted to, use your own website forms if you like. Next, we've got accessing the assets that you need. Now, most of this will be taken care of during the questionnaire where you're asking for their logo or asking for photography. But more often than not, they, they will send this over via email or they don't include it in the questionnaire. Okay, so we make sure that we are collecting that information and any additional information that we need, like for example, accessing their domain name or accessing their existing website, things like that, accessing any Google Analytics, we access the stuff that we need in order to fulfill the project. We take care of that in step four. And then finally, the fifth step, okay, is we just wrap this up. We wrap all this information up and we send them a welcome email. We're welcoming them to our business and we're super thrilled to be working with them and we essentially let them know that that is the case. Okay, don't worry, I'm gonna show you what this email looks like. I'll give you an example of emails that we've sent out in the past for our onboarding and it's, it's really easy for our customer. So you can see here, subject line, welcome to Parker Digital. So we're just welcoming them to our business and we're just saying, hi name. So hi Joe, hi John, hi Rebecca, whatever the customer's name is, address them by their first name. You wanna make it really you know personal. Uh, so it was really good, it was really great speaking with you today. I'm really excited to help you and then insert what their goal is from the discovery call. Okay, you wanna make sure that's important. You wanna make sure that you do that. It's important that you reiterate you that you know what you're doing. You know what their end goal is and what you're trying to help them achieve. Okay, it really helps them. And again, it's all about setting expectations and giving them the confidence that they need to make sure that they've made the right choice. So there's a couple of small things that I need from you in order for us to get started, okay? Firstly, you will have two separate emails in your inbox from Hello Bonsai. One is outlining the agreement, which we'll need to sign, and the other is an invoice for a deposit to secure your spot. Please take care of these two first. Now there's a key thing here, okay, and you may have picked up on this already. So in this instance, we're sending two emails from Hello Bonsai. So Hello Bonsai is the tool that we mostly use for our service agreements, and we use Stripe for our payment processor. Now there are circumstances where we use Hello Bonsai for our payment as well, okay? It might be that they're paying for the project up front and we don't need to worry about having their card on file. But that being said, using Hello Bonsai, it still takes payment and processes it through Stripe. So we are essentially still using Stripe and it's totally up to you how you handle this. We're paying for Hello Bonsai anyway, so we can either use Stripe or we can use Hello Bonsai for both. In this circumstance, we are using Hello Bonsai for both. So firstly, I need you to complete this short questionnaire which recaps the aims of your project and gives us what we need. Okay, we're telling them we need them to complete the questionnaire. Okay, please complete this to the best of your ability to allow us to do our best work. It's really important that we're putting that in there so they're not lazy with it. Customers, they don't have a lot of time. They think you have all the answers and they just want you to do a good job without giving you the information that you need. So just by having that line in there just really helps them sort of understand that the better job that they can do here with this questionnaire, the better job that we do with their work. And if they want us to do a good job, the least that they can do is do a good job with the questionnaire. And then we've got a link there to the Google form. And then we're just saying, if there's any questions, please don't hesitate to reply to this message. So it's super simple. So we've got three actions for them there. 
pay the invoice, sign the agreement, complete the questionnaire. That's all we need to do at this point. Now, once they've done that, we actually have something new that we're doing within our business at the moment, just to really continue to increase the experience that our customer gets and keep them informed, set expectations, allowing them to understand what's next, what's happening. And that is having our own customer dashboard. And you can see an example here, it's built within Notion, where you can see we have a welcome note, we have a welcome video where we're talking them through how they can use their dashboard, what things are, and just to educate them on, on how they can use this and get the most out of it. They also have a section on what's up next, okay? What tasks do we need them to do? What tasks have been done already, okay? It keeps them in the loop of understanding what is next. And you can see that we've got read and sign the agreement, which is the commitment. We've got complete the intake questionnaire. And again, we've got a link to that questionnaire within the dashboard as well as the email. But areas that they can share their inspiration, they can share their brand documents, they can upload files. So there's a lot of really cool stuff happening here. We've got key resources down in the bottom corner where it reminds them of what the project brief is, just so we understand the project and they can see what our understanding is. We have, as I've said, the intake questionnaire, we have an inspiration bank, we have content guidelines. So we now offer content guidelines to all of our customers when they agree to work with us. So when they are writing their own content, we can give them guidelines for them to follow to make sure that they are doing the best job that they can do to write the content. It allows us to have content that works well with our style, with our process, with our you know structure and our format. And more importantly, it's designed to help their websites convert better. Now, a business knows their business better than you do. That's always going to be the case, which is why it's really, for us, it's it's a much better way of working if they write their content. Of course, once they've sent it over to us, we can you know we can edit it and things like that. But they have all of the uh, they have all of their correct information, and it's just up to us to make sure that it's um, suitable and it's going to allow the website to do its job, which is why we provide those guides. Um, we have a development checklist so they can see how far through the process that we are. So again, it's keeping them informed, it's keeping them in the loop, and they can see exactly what's going on. Okay, it's full transparency. That's, that's what customers like, which is why this dashboard is really cool. And then over on the right-hand side towards the bottom, you can see a snippet of the project timeline. So they can see what's gonna happen during what dates, and again, what can they expect? What what has been completed already? How long is this project gonna take? Things like that. So if you want access to this dashboard, okay, it is within the Agency Alchemist program. So go and have a look and you can just copy it and use it for your own business. You can clone it. As well as everything else that I've spoken about today, templates, the questionnaires, scripts, actual step-by-step -step processes as to how we onboard a customer within our agency. You can have access to all of that within the Agency Alchemist program. There's a link down below if you're interested in that. So that's our onboarding process. Hopefully you can now appreciate the importance of onboarding and making sure that you get this right for your own business. If you've got any questions, please leave a comment down below and I'll more than happily answer them. But as I said, this is part four in a series and next time we're gonna be talking more about the web design process and how we process clients to create the websites that not only look good, but more importantly convert and get our customers inquiries. So if you are gonna be interested in that, make sure that you subscribe and you'll see that video come up in one to two weeks time if it hasn't launched already. Um, but I value you, thank you for being here, thanks for watching and there's an end screen coming up with more valuable content for you to consume. I will see you guys in the next video, bye.